Sugar, butter, sugar, butter, flour, sugar, butter, flour, sugar, butter, flour, sugar, butter, flour, What do you mean somebody's taking over my blog for six weeks? Absolutely not. Get my agent on the phone. Welcome to vlog 41. So the news is out. So Alice and Gavin Creel are joining Waitress. <laughs> In the world's worst kept secret ever. Does anybody care? Don't get me wrong, So Alice is incredible. Her songs are beautiful. But it's still a bit of a shit show, let's be honest. Although Gavin Creel, back in London, missed him. He's great. I hope he brings his little dog. Anyway, yes, David Hunter is being swung out of the show for six weeks. And he posted the sweetest message telling his fans not to worry. But if they wanted to be mildly upset, it would help his ego. I love David Hunter. Ever since he did that Jesus Christ Superstar ITV reality show. He was great in that. Senior riding brown town with the girl I love and I'm like forget you. I, I love you, David. You are such a strong vocalist. You have your own unique style. You're telling the story from the heart. You ooze charisma. You are fantastic. But what if that day don't come? I need love. You were born to perform. It is so natural to you, and it is such a pleasure to watch. We won't build you up. having six weeks off. Of course he doesn't. Whether this signals the end of Waitress, Lucy Jones is departing. Rumours are she's going into, uh, I can't say. I don't know. It's one last ditch attempt to salvage this piss poor show. I know the show has a big, huge following. And even recently, one of their matinees sold out which definitely indicates that there is still a strong fan base for the show. I just don't think it's a great show, to be honest. And I think the sooner it goes, the sooner we can get something else in, which I want to go and see. Anyway, meanwhile, sticking with Waitress News, Laura Baldwin is joining the touring cast of Beautiful, along with Adam Gillian. Oh, I can't wait. I love that show. And I cannot wait to see them in it. On Monday, I was at the press night for Soho Cinders at the Charing Cross Theatre. Now, the Charing Cross have had a bit of a tough year. The production of Amour closed very early and the production of Queen of the Mist didn't sell too well easily. But this is definitely seems to be ticking all the boxes. Written by Styles and Drew, whose production of Mary Poppins has also opened this week, they are definitely onto a surefire hit with Luke Bayer and Millie O'Connell from Six heading up the cast. They both have an incredibly strong fan base, so there is no doubt Tickets will be shifting to get to see them in this production. Now, Soho Cinders was originally at the Soho Theatre in 2012, starring Michael Xavier, and was resurrected in 2016 at the Union Theatre, where it was directed by Will Keefe, 
Will has now teamed up with Michaela Stern and Kyle Tovey to co-produce this new production based on their 2016 production when Michaela played one of the Ugly Sisters. She's back to reprise her role and Will is back to direct. Joining the team is Adam Haig as choreographer. Now it's a very ambitious project for three new producers but they seem to have hit the ground running and it's really really encouraging. They clearly care about their performers and have made sure that everybody in this production is being paid more than equity rates, which is definitely commendable given that there's a cast of 16. The show is enjoyable and it is a perfect lead up to the festive period with performances leading right up until Christmas. There have been a few updates to the script, but generally it is the same production from 2012. Some would argue it's not fully representative of Soho, but it is just a bit of fun. And it's a fairy tale mixed up and updated for today's generation with lots of pop references thrown in. And this production has done a really good job of updating the script to include some more recent pop references. And Adam Haig has gone one step further by having some same-sex dancing within the show, which is brilliant. And even on press night, in the audience was Matt Evers from Dancing on Ice, who later in January will be teaming up with H from Steps to form the first same-sex couple on Dancing on Ice on ITV. Now that is a massive move forward for same-sex recognition and visibility in television. And like I say, it was nice that Adam gave it a little nod with his choreography. Now back to the cast, they are incredible. Some of which come with the production from 2016 and some are new. Newbies including my old flatmate Tom Ball, who <laughs> looks incredible in a tiny little white pair of shorts. Wait till you see him. Lewis Asquith is back playing James Prince, opposite Luke Bayer, who plays the Cinderella character. Now Luke, who I've known since he was about 14, has always used his Northern accent. So this is a huge departure to see him play a Cockney and he does a really good job and sounds incredible. Opposite him, Millie is sensational. We all fell in love with her when we saw her in Six, but this show really definitely gives her more to do and shows how good she is. She's incredible. Ewan Gillies absolutely steals the show for me. If you see it, look out for him howling like a dog. It's brilliant. Also, Tori Hargraves, who I met earlier this year when she was in Boom Bang a Bang and Above the Stag. She is incredible. Here she is using her Scouse accent, which I love. The set is simple, but they've done a really, really good job of playing to both sides of the audience in the new Thrust space. Now Styles and Drew are incredible composers. You have to go no further than just up the road to watch Mary Poppins to find that out. With Soho Cinders, it's not the best work. There are some catchy songs in it, but you can see why it never really took off. It's good, it's enjoyable, it's harmless, it's nothing groundbreaking, which I don't think it was ever fully intended to be. Like I say, this is a great, fun show, perfectly timed for Christmas, and very, very well produced by this new team of young, fresh producers. It might not be fully representative of Soho, but let's be honest, it's a fairy tale. Let it go.
this I raced up to Kinky Cabaret's Halloween special. Hosted by Carmelani, who put a spell on us all with Emma Lunders and Squad Goals, the new trio made up of the incredible Ginzilla, Sean Miley Moore and Casey Leon. The three of them are formidable drag queens with exceptional voices. And when they come together, they are brilliant. Here are a few videos from the evening. Kinky Cabaret, I've hosted this show for nine years and I have never sung this song here. I'm here tonight. My career is very limited. Can I just have a vision for this tonight? Love of the sea, oh I know. Sounds chilly, crazy, wink and true. The vision is hazy, but I swear someday I'll be flying so hard to buy a brand new. I'm flying by a brand new. Come on, let's fucking do it. So if you can.
Tuesday, I was at the National Philosopher in East London for a monthly comedy show called The Funny Boiler. Hosted by Victoria Gallo Fadies, she brings together eight very different comedians who each test out some of their new work. Some of it was very, very funny. Some of it did need a little bit more work. But generally, it was a fun, fun evening. And like I say, these evenings are now every month. So if you get Chaz, follow their Twitter and get yourself along to one of their shows. On Wednesday, I was at the White Bear for the press night of Different From The Others, a new gay play by Claudio McCaw. Claudio's most recent work has included Savage and Taylor Made Man here at the White Bear. And he is now back with this brand new play all about gay propaganda. In an amazing true story, over 100 years ago, a pro-gay video was made as a silent movie. Now, this video recently resurfaced a few years ago, having been banned all those years ago. And now what Claudia has done is written the backstory to how this film got made. It's a very touching, funny and charming piece that tells this story beautifully. And it is a huge part of gay history, which is definitely something that Claudia likes to explore in all his work. The production is on to the 16th of November, so make sure you get to check it out if you can. And even have a look on YouTube for the original video. Saturday afternoon, I was at the West End Musical Brunch. This is a fantastic event that happens every Saturday and Sunday at Café de Paris. Now, this is a brunch with a difference, held every Saturday and Sunday at Café de Paris. And it is doing incredibly well. Having run for nearly a year now, it is continuing to sell out. I went along on Saturday to join in all the fun. <laughs> of 55 to 75 pound depending how early you book you are treated to one hour of bottomless prosecco or gin cocktails after that they bring around some burgers and chips 
and then some chocolate gato and sorbet. Now, by this point, everybody in the room is there for a good time. And this event really does attract huge groups and parties. I was sat amongst a table of 20 who had come from out of town for somebody's birthday. Once all the drinking and food has commenced, the entertainment starts. Hosted by Carl Malani from Kinky Cabaret and joined this week by Vanessa Fisher and Laura Emmett, we were treated to an array of show tunes. <laughs> Whether it was down to all the Prosecco, it was really great fun. Now, events like this, as well as bars like Overtures and Sing Easy at Piano Works West End, are proving how much people love musical theatre, especially people from out of town who want to come. And there is definitely a market for tourists who want to come into town. West End Musical Theatre provides an opportunity to hear some of the best West End stars singing while you enjoy your brunch. It's a no-brainer. The food is pretty basic. Like I say, it's just burgers and chips. But the atmosphere is incredible. And everybody is there to have a good time. And they definitely, definitely do. Here are a few videos from the afternoon. <laughs>
On Saturday evening, I was at the Two Brewers for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the musical. Now, if you're an avid Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan, you will know that they once did an episode which was fully sang through called Once More with Feeling. Now, that episode proved incredibly popular and they even released all the songs onto CD. This was nearly 20 years ago, and shortly afterwards, a savvy producer decided to start up his own sing-along versions and took it around America. Now, I remember this. He got into a lot of trouble with Fox Television, who make Buffy Vampire Slayer, who issued him a cease and desist, telling him to stop putting on their show because he didn't have the rights. And since then, they have never ever released the rights. For good reason, they are clearly very protective of their brand. Now these guys here at the Two Brewers obviously didn't apply for the rights and just decided to put the show on for two special evenings over Halloween. And it was more of a parody and although some of them did look quite good, I'll be honest, the production values were quite low. Essentially, what they did was just show the episode on a main screen while they dressed in similar looking costumes and danced around and sang in front of the main screen. And they all sounded great, but obviously the costumes weren't quite right. They weren't mic'd, so you couldn't really hear them. Um, but yeah, having said that, it was just a bit of fun. And they did a great job at parodying the show. And with both shows selling out, it just goes to show how popular Buffy the Vampire Slayer still is, even after 20 years. Everybody in the audience were loving it. Here are a few videos from the show.
never tell. And at night, when I'm right in her tight cut and brace time. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm a boy with a small talk. Don't know a thing. Why you come to me with me? I think I finally know. Say 
Okay, you can write that down. A day you set out what you do want, there'll probably be a parade. 76 bloody trombones. Look, you don't have to say anything. Sunday, I was at the Union Theatre for this month's Roles Will Never Play. Tom Dewan and his team were all back for this show that continues to sell out. They were literally packing them in on beanbags and the show continues to impress. Tom always brings together an incredible lineup who all sing songs from shows that they would normally not be cast in. And there were some standout performances. I am not gonna single anybody out because they were all brilliant, but all the videos can be found on my YouTube channel for you to have a little look at. And all the links to the videos are all in my blog. I really love being invited to these evenings and the chance to see all these incredible people. Now you are down and out and feeling really crappy. <laughs> when I see how sad you are, it sort of makes me
that broke my heart in two Trying to save a part of you
so that's it for this week. I hope, <coughs> sorry about that. I hope you've had a fantastic week and I look forward to seeing you next time.